Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are having a great Friday. Uh, let me go ahead and thank everybody for your comments, for liking, and for subscribing. The channel has grown immensely in about the last week and a half, and I really, really do appreciate it. I want to say thank you to my Patreon supporters. I really do appreciate that. Uh, there are links in the description down below if you would like to uh, help the channel out. Uh, there's also a link down there for the petition that I got started over at change.org just to put a numerical value and a physical number on the amount of fans who do not want uh, Priscilla buried at Graceland. So if you want to go check that out, you can. And so that brings us to today's video. Now, when I did the Priscilla Presley video uh, a couple of weeks ago or a week or so ago, uh, a lot of the comments would mention the Church of Scientology. As you are all aware, Priscilla and Lisa Marie uh, were both involved in the Church of Scientology. Lisa Marie later separated herself from the church. Uh, and in my personal opinion, that's around the exact same time or just after where she started having uh, problems with her mother, who is actively involved in the church. And uh, I, I, if you ask me, I think that's where Lisa started uh, seeing a little bit more clearly about what had been going on. That's when she took her uh, off the wheel and changed all the, her trust and all that stuff. Um, I, that's my personal opinion, is that it all surrounded around Lisa Marie leaving the Church of Scientology. Um, so anyway, that could be totally unfounded. I don't know. It just seems like it fits in the timeline. Maybe it doesn't. If you have an opinion on why her and uh, Priscilla quit talking the last seven or eight years of uh, Lisa's life, leave it down in the comments down below. But what I want to do today is I came across an article, and it is from the Memphis Flyer, and it was written all the way back August the 10th of 2001 by an author named Jackson Baker. Uh, anyway, I want to read just a little bit from it. It's, it's a very long article, um, but I want to read a little bit from it and then a little commentary, and then I want your opinion on it, okay? So here we go. And this is talking about um, Elvis and Scientology, and then uh, a little bit about Priscilla and Lisa Marie. So the title of the article is, uh, Where There's Smoke, There's Scientology. It was 1973 or 1974, not long after the split up between Elvis Presley and Priscilla Ballou Presley. Which is actually Priscilla Ann Wagner, but we'll pretend like it's Priscilla Ballou Presley. Uh, the parents of Lisa Marie Presley, then the heiress and now possessor of the king of rock and roll's name and fortune. Though in public, he tried to pretend otherwise, even on occasion introducing his former wife to concert audiences as his good and caring friend. No problem, no sweat, no big deal. Come on up here, honey. Let him look at you. Elvis was stricken and in a searching mode for women, for meaning, for solace that he never quite came to the end of. In my 1998 interview with Priscilla for Memphis Magazine, the King's ex-wife acknowledged what various friends and relatives and fans had long felt but few had articulated, that for Elvis, the loss of his wife had been a crippling psychological wound, one that sapped his energies and may have accelerated his final undoing. Yes, I'm afraid it was true. Priscilla said in a statement that the National Enquirer later made the basis of one of its patented front-page hypes, I killed Elvis. One of the King's new companions, the actress Peggy Lipton, who had played on TV's Mod Squad and later married the musician Quincy Jones, had a fervent interest in the Church of Scientology and, sensing Elvis's need, tried to entice him into the orbit of those who followed his doctrine which professed to rescue a practitioner from the seated engrams of his or her troubled psyche by raising them to a consciousness and expunging them. Scientology would seem to avail itself more of psychology than of theology, but whatever it was, the Pentecostally raised Elvis was attracted enough to pay a visit one day to the church's center on Los Angeles' Sunset Boulevard. As Memphis Mafia member Lamar Fike, who was in the group that accompanied Elvis, recalled in the 1995 HarperCollins book, Elvis Aaron Presley, Revelations from the Memphis Mafia, Elvis went in and talked to them. He waited in the car, but apparently they started doing all these charts and crap for him. Elvis came out and said, 
Fuck those people. There's no way I'll ever get involved with that son of a bitchin' group. All they want is my money. Well, Peggy still kept on about it, so Elvis didn't date her anymore. And he stayed away from Scientology like it was a cobra. He'd shit a brick to see how far Lisa Marie's gotten into it. So one is left with little more than a sense of irony. And Elvis and Me, her 1991 bestseller about her life with the king, Priscilla devotes a memorable chapter to her frustrations with the Elvis of the late 60s, who habitually hold up with his collection of spiritualist, Eastern-oriented texts frustrating his young wife, who had more physical preoccupations at the time. There came the moment, as she tells it, when she and Tom Parker, Elvis's Svengali-like manager, who had his own concerns about his charges preoccupations, conspired to gather the offending texts and dispose of them in a vividly described bonfire loaded with obvious symbolic overtones on the lawn of the Presley's Los Angeles residence. This is the woman who, followed by her daughter, would go on to devote herself so fully to the practice of Scientology that she would become one of the church's undeniable eminences. This is either an extreme irony or none at all, depending on whether one finally sees the Church of Scientology as spiritual or non-spiritual. So, very interesting article. It is very long, and I only hit the high points that uh, directly mentioned or affected Elvis. Um, they go on to talk about the church and what it does and the, the Scientology Center in Memphis. And just want to throw this out there. Like I said, there were a lot of comments in the Priscilla video about uh, the Church of Scientology and their involvement and how much uh, Scientology money is involved in Graceland and all that. And uh, in the actual article from the Memphis Flyer, some of the part I skipped, it actually said that Jack Soden, who was uh, credited for saving Graceland, he said that, that not one time has the Church of Scientology had any influence in Graceland, the fan experience, or anything. Nobody's ever approached him with it. Uh, they don't bring it up, and it's a completely non-existent um, part of Priscilla and Lisa Marie's life when it comes to Graceland or EPE. Anyway, I wanted to focus on Elvis and, and what he thought about the church. And I didn't even know until I read this, because I haven't read um, Elvis and me, um, I didn't know that her and Parker had conspired to take all of Elvis's religious material and burn it in the front yard because he was preoccupied with that and not wanting to have relations with her, obviously. I mean, just uh, so self-centered. Uh, anyway, just wanted to, to cover this and get your thoughts on it. Uh, as you can see, Elvis did not want to have anything to do with the Church of Scientology. Uh, as you know, anything about Elvis's uh, religious beliefs, um, he kind of covered all his bases, and he was uh, famously said that he didn't want to miss out on heaven due to a technicality. Uh, so he read all kinds of religious material, practiced various religious um, practices, um, even went to the Scientology Center in L.A. to see what they were all about, and left because, obviously, he didn't, um, he, he wasn't buying what they were selling. Anyway, he said all he, all they wanted was his money, and Lamar Fike was very, very um, vocal on uh, what Elvis said and, and how he put it, and how he felt that Elvis would feel. And now, this is Lamar Fike, very close to Elvis, longtime member of the Memphis Mafia, uh, around Elvis all the time, and he said, that Elvis would shit a brick if he knew how far Lisa Marie and Priscilla got into the Church of Scientology. And if you don't know the story, it was right after, right after uh, Elvis and Pr uh, Priscilla split up that she joined the Church of Scientology. As a matter of fact, there's an interview out there somewhere. Let me, let me find it real quick so I can quote the text. If you'll go all the way back to August of 1973, Priscilla did an interview uh, in the Ladies' Home Journal, and here is what she says in that interview. The, the actual interview, I guess it's like a, a mini book in this Ladies' Home Journal, uh, but it's entitled Priscilla Presley, My Life With and Without Elvis Presley. 
which is kind of odd because she hadn't been without Elvis very long. Um, so anyway, it goes on to talk about before they met, the courtship, the marriage, all that stuff. I'll leave a link down in the description below to go look at this article. And if you read it, it's it's very long. And she says a lot. And uh, it's pretty neat to compare what she said in August of 73 with what she said uh, in later years, especially when she wrote her book. Um, but anyway, uh, she said in this article, and this is on Elvis Australia, which is the official Elvis Presley fan club of Australia. Uh, they have a lot of information. If you had never been there, they have tons of information. Very, very good resource. And so here's what she said in that interview in August of 1973. Priscilla takes pride in saying that she has enrolled her daughter in a very exclusive academy where they speak French. And she's only five. I've also been thinking about giving Lisa some religious background and have been considering the religion of science. Have you heard anything about it? I really don't know that much about the church, but I plan to look into it. I want to see for myself if I like it. She pauses. I want Lisa to have a religious foundation, and I feel that I need it too. I was raised as a Catholic, but I don't really believe that that is the way for me. I think that everybody needs some kind of support, though, and I would like to get into something different, a more realistic religion. So. All the way back in August of 1973, which was just right after her and Elvis had split up and filed for divorce. I don't even think the divorce is final at this point. I think it was final in October. Uh, I could be wrong on that, though. Not real sure. Let me know if I'm mistaken. Anyway, just wanted to let y'all know that even as far back as then, in 1973, in August of 73, she was looking into the Church of Scientology. So there's no telling how involved or or if they've approached her or how she found out about the Church of Scientology. I'm sure that story's out there somewhere. Uh, but it kind of looks like that all the way back from uh, Priscilla and him being married up until he met uh, Peggy Lipton, um, the Church of Scientology had been trying to creep up in Elvis's life. And he didn't want to have anything to do with it. Nothing. You had uh, Priscilla who I'm sure had mentioned it to him at some point. And then uh, Peggy Lipton come along uh, and eventually talked him into or nagged him into going by the Scientology Center in L.A. And you see how that turned out. Uh, anyway, just wanted to throw this out there. Uh, these are not my facts. So if anything is wrong, uh, please let me know in the comments down below if something doesn't add up or seems a little fishy. Uh, this is an article from the uh, Memphis Flyer, and then uh, her um, interview in Ladies Home Journal from August of 1973. Head on over to the uh, Australian Elvis fan website and check that out. If you hadn't been there already, I'm telling you, it's a wealth of information. So anyway, that's going to do it for today. Let me know your thoughts in the uh, comment section down below. And thank everybody for watching. Thank my Patreon supporters. Uh, that's going to do it for today. I hope everybody has a great weekend. I'm probably going to do a video this weekend. Not real sure. So don't hold me to it, but I may try if I have the time. So anyway, that's going to do it for today. Um, I'm kind of iffy. Y'all let me know. Should I say, is it the correct way to say y'all keep TCB with ING on the end? Or should I just say y'all keep TCB? Because, uh, that, that would be y'all keep taking care of business, but it doesn't sound right. It's kind of like, ATM and ATM machine, right? You don't want to say the machine twice. Anyway, y'all let me know in the comment section down below. Should it be y'all keep TCB in or y'all keep TCB? Or y'all TCB? Y'all keep TCB. That just doesn't sound right. Anyway, that's going to do it. We'll see you next time. Take care now. Bye-bye. That never quite came to the end of. In my 1998 TV had been a crippling psychic one that's who had a more physical preoccup preoccup who had a more physical pre who had more physical preoccup <clears throat> there came the moment as she tells it when she and Tom Parker 
Elvis's what how the hell do you even say that word? Svengali? Svengali? Svengali. 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 Would go on to devote herself to fully would go on to or, or vice versa, he wasn't uh selling what they were buying. So uh and I think it's by uh or the Elvis Presley Fan Club of Australia's official official site. Official fan page uh for the fans 